Good job. We did it. Okay, okay, okay. Hold your horses. We still got one more requirement to implement. And that is we need to set the error messages in case of an invalid validation. And as you can see in the original code, this is only supposed to be run when the validate for create method failed or when the validate for create method indicates a validation failure. And the cool thing in Trailblazer operations is that achieving something like that is one line of code. So instead of having to deal with control flow code inside this method with if and else, there is a very neat way to add error handling. And that is by using the fail method. So what I do is I add another step, add errors after validate for create using the fail method. And add errors is just another method with a step interface. So you have the context and you have keyword arguments just in any other step we just implemented. And again, I just copy over the code from the controller. So this is just pseudocode. You wouldn't do it like that, but it shows the purpose. So what is the deal with this fail thing? Please have a look at this magnificent diagram that I created for you. So this shows our operation with the success track and all the steps we placed on it and the empty failure track. And by using fail add errors, we literally put a new step on the failure track and not on the success track. And depending on when you call it, it will add this failure track after a specific new step. So in this case, this add errors step is placed after validate for create. So only the first two steps will hit add errors if one of those steps fails. And as you can see in this diagram, if there is a failure in create model or in notify, those two steps are not gonna hit add errors because they are like basically too late. Only extract params and validate for create are gonna run into that um, step on the failure track if they failed. So there's a clear separation of concerns. So it's, it's my job to implement what is happening and it's the operations job to control when things are happening. The last thing we have to implement is a couple of more tests. And since we're using an errors object, it's a good idea to inject that object into all invocations in your tests. So he, in the first case, in the success case, I will just add an errors object and here is just an empty hash. So this is just to show you how things might work. And I just test that this errors object is still empty after a successful run. And then in the two failing test cases, I um, add the errors object to the method, to the operation invocation. And then I add some placeholder assertion. Since I do not know the complete error message, and I usually just run the test and then I copy over the failing test message to the actual test case. So I run the test and both failing assertions are complaining that there is no title, title is invalid. So what I do is I just copy the error message and then paste it into my test cases. When I run the test again, everything is beautiful. Life is great. Okay, so the last thing I wanna discuss is that actually we should not have an error message set in this case when we have an invalid params data structure. But this is a topic which is great to discuss the wiring API in operations, but I'm gonna save that for another episode.